2 Samuel 18. And David numbered the people that were with him, and set captains of thousands and captains of hundreds over them. And what he's doing, he's preparing a military force. He's going to go out and battle against Absalom. Absalom's going to come and battle against him. Absalom has started a battle, remember, from chapter 17. And David sent forth a third part of the people under the hand of Joab, that's been his military commander, a third part under the hand of Abishai, Joab's brother, the son of Zeruiah, Joab's brother, and a third part under the hand of Yitai, the Giddite. He's another man under David's authority. And the king said unto the people, I will surely go forth with you myself also. Let's go back to chapter 11, verse 1, just real quick. I think David's learned his lesson. Chapter 11, verse 1. And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon, and besieged Ramah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. David's like, I'm going. <laughs> I ain't staying this time. All this trouble is because of that one name. I was not where I was supposed to be. But the people answered, Thou shalt not go forth. For if we flee away, they will not care for us. So we go out to battle and we end up running. We turn and run. No one cares about us, David. No one cares about us but like you. If we flee away, they will not care for us. Neither if half of us die. Now they're not going to care at all. Will they care for us? No. Absalom has become an enemy. But now thou art worth 10,000 of us. Therefore now it is better that thou succor, that means to help or aid, us out of the city. So they're relying on David. They don't want David to go into battle. They don't want him to get killed. They don't want to be out of his authority. They don't want, if they run, losing David. So what Absalom has done to the nation of Israel is complete chaos and turmoil. You got two leaders, you got two militaries, you got a war. It's a silver war silver. It's a civil war. And it's actually family against family. Absalom is David's son. It's turmoil. And the king said unto them, what seemeth you best, I will do. And the king stood by the gate side, and all the people came out by numbers and by thousands. So he's going to submit to the people. This is not his own doing. They don't want him in battle. They want to protect him. Because if Absalom were to find him in battle, David would be surely dead. And the king commanded Joab and Abishai and Utah. These are the three military leaders of the three parts of this military campaign against Absalom. Deal gently. That's the first time gently shows up in the Bible. Here's the order. Deal gently for my sake with the young man, even with Absalom. Don't be harsh with him. Don't be cruel with him. For my sake. And all the people heard. I'll write that down. David addresses his three military leaders. In the, and you're going to see this again. The military people say, we heard what David. We heard the orders. That's important to what's coming up. When the king gave all the captains charge concerning Absalom. So it's common knowledge what David ordered. So the people went out into the field against Israel. Silver, silver, I keep saying, civil war, not silver war, civil war. Brother against brother, family against family, tribe against tribe. And the battle was in the wood 
of Ephraim. Then we say woods, plural. All the Bible does is take all the trees and puts them as one tree. That's a better word. Where the people of Israel were slain before the servants of David. And there was there a great slaughter that day of 20,000 men. 20,000 men because of one son has revolted over his father in the military and all because David stayed home one night from the war. This is payment of David's sin with Bathsheba. And 20,000 men have been killed and there is absolutely when it comes to the wages of sin, others will suffer. It is never just the sinner. Do you realize when someone makes a foolish statement as my sin doesn't affect others? Let's look at it this way. Did Eve not take that fruit and eat it? And let's say approximately 6,000 years. Since that day. I don't know how many years exactly. But let's say 6,000 years. How many people have suffered because she disobeyed God by eating that fruit? And you're going to have the nerve to say, well, my sin doesn't affect others. And we've seen it. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Achan. He sins. And all his family and all his livestock are killed. There are men that raise up against Moses and Aaron and their entire family. The earth opens up and swallows them up. And I'm trying to read a note I got here. I, I don't know where I got this note, but it's like, what ID do the men have here to say on whose side they are on? I don't know if they had uniforms. I don't know if they had colors or that. But here is the wood, and here are people walking in the woods. Is that Absalom's army or is it David's army? For the battle was there scattered over the face of all the country. The wood devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. We're going to see Absalom is going to get hung in a tree, in an oak. There are people who are getting hung by the oak. There are people, whatever animals, maybe, the trees themselves, the, the terrain of this wood or woods is killing the people off more than what the sword is killing. Uh, and Absalom met the servants of David. All right, here we go. One-on-one -on -one battle. Absalom is now in the middle of the battle. This is where God won him by the council of Hithothel and the council of Hushai. Hushai said, well, Absalom, you go into battle. Absalom, let's go kill David. But God has instructed Hushai in his council. Put Absalom there in the battle. I'm going to kill him. Asahel has already killed himself by hanging. Uh, Judas will hang himself. And we're going to see another hanging. And Absalom rode upon a mule. Again, that's the king's ride. And the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak. Oaks are very important trees in the Bible. Now I've heard say that Jesus, the cross was a dogwood tree. If you're going to ask me my personal opinion, I would say according to the Bible, I would say that that cross was made of an oak. I don't see dogwood tree anywhere in the Bible. But we read about Jacob carrying all the idols and images and burying them under an oak. 
we see that Deborah, who died, was buried under an oak. We see here Absalom is going to hang in an oak. But what was the wood of the cross? I have no idea. And his head, now get that head, Antichrist. Antichrist is going to get a wounded to his head. His right eye is going to be clean, dried up. Caught hold of the oak. Remember his long hair? Remember how pretty boy Absalom is long hair? He only cut it once a year. Well, here it's caught in the tree. Caught hold of the oak. And he was taken up between the heaven and the earth. He's hanging. And the mule that was under him went away. So here he is. He's riding his mule. He gets his head stuck in the tree, in the, in the boughs of the tree, in the branch. And his mule just keeps walking. So now he's just dangling there. And he's not dangling by his neck. Because that would have brought death. His head, his hair is caught in the trees. And a certain man saw it. And told Joab. And said, behold. I saw Absalom. Hang in an oak. There is no death. He's still alive. And I got Deuteronomy 21, 18. Deuteronomy 21, 18. Deuteronomy 21, 18. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, Absalom, which will not obey the voice of his father, the voice of his mother, and that, when they have chastened, that's the first time that word shows up, chastened him, and will not hearken to him, and then, then shall his father, his mother, lay hold on him, and bring him out of the elders, bring him out unto the elders of the city, and unto the gate of his place. That's an interesting, unto his place. That's going to come up again. And what they should do is capital punishment that child for not obeying. The law were prevented Absalom doing what he's doing now. And David said, listen, go on to the judges. My son is not obeying. He's a rebel. And God's got to take things in his own hand. Now, Jesus Christ suffered and died on a tree. That's, that's New Testament. We know it's a cross. Absalom is going to die in a tree, a type of Antichrist. Now, the Antichrist is not going to die in a tree. The Bible says some kind of weapon is going to get his right arm and his right eye. Maybe he will go in a tree. I don't know. I mean, Scripture goes with the Scripture. But Absalom is complete rebellion. And there's no death. That man was saying, I've seen Absalom dead, but there he is hanging in a tree. And Joab said unto the man that told him, And behold, thou sawest him. You saw him. Why didst thou not smite him there to the ground? Why didn't you kill him? So see, he's still alive. He's probably screaming right now. Where is Absalom's army? That he's not getting no help. You ever... Well, wonder that. Not smitten him there to the ground. And I would have given thee ten shekels of silver and a girdle. That's like a belt, a band. I would have paid you out of my own pocket if you had killed Absalom. Now, this is important. Verse 12. And the man said unto Joab, Though I should receive a thousand shekels of silver in my hand, put it right in my hand, yet would I not put forth my hand against the king's son. For in our hearing, verse 5, in our hearing the king charged thee, he's rebuking Joab, 
And Abishai and Udai, verse 5, saying, Beware that none touch the young man, Absalom. Sir, you were ordered. Now we already know that Joab is a rebel rebellious against God, rebellious against men. He killed a man not in wartime because he killed his brother in wartime. Joab's a murderer. And this soldier, or maybe not even a soldier, maybe somebody walking by that says this man comes up to him and says, I saw Absalom, he's in that tree, and Joab's like, why didn't you kill him? Because David ordered us. He ordered you. And we all heard it. Otherwise, first time that word shows up, I should have wrought falsehood, first time that word shows up, against my own life. Joab, if I killed him, I'm in trouble with my leader, my King David. What on earth are you giving me orders I should have killed him? Are you not obeying your commander? For there is no matter hid from the king. Remember that man that said he killed Saul? David had him killed. David finds things out. David has the priest. He has the ephah. God will speak to David. That's why I didn't do it. <clears throat> and thou, Joab, thyself would have set thyself against me. Oh. So, if I were to go up to the king, the king said, well, if he had killed Absalom, why would you kill my son? Well, we're in a military campaign, and Joab ordered me to do it. You know what you would have done, Joab? I didn't order him. I had nothing to do with it, David. He did it on his own reconnaissance. This man is telling us the character of Job is he, uh, Job, Joab, that he won't even back up his own troops. This is some guy, Joab. Then said Joab, I may not tarry thus with thee. I don't want to be with you. I don't want to hear anymore. My mind is set. I don't care what King David said. I don't care what you say. Shut up and get out of my face. That's what he said. And he took three darts. That's the first time that word shows up. In his hand. This is Joab. And thrust them through the heart of Absalom. He's now dead. He didn't die in that tree. From the tree. He died in that tree from Abs I mean, from Joab. And look what else. While he was yet alive. In the midst of the oak. And ten young men that bear Joab's armor, the third lamb has died. Back here, let's see, where is it? Where is it? Chapter 12, verse 6. 2 Samuel 12, 6. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold. The baby. Amen. And now Absalom. One more child will die. For the sin. The ten young men that bear Joab's armor. Oh, Joab had a lot of armor. He had ten men. Goliath had one man just to hold his shield. Compass, that means a circle. Go around, you know, you take a compass, you make a circle. About and smote Absalom and slew him. He's dead. And they're beating him. They're abusing the body. This is what Saul was afraid of. When he said to his armor bearer, fall, kill me. At least they abuse me. They're, I mean, they're having their, their, their way with Absalom. They're beating that body. They're, they're 
cutting that body, they're punching that body. He's dead. And Joab blew the trumpet. End of the war. And the people returned from pursuing after Israel. Civil war is done. And Joab held back the people. All right, let's stop. War's over. And they took Absalom and cast him into a great pit in the wood. They didn't take him far. They made a pit, a big hole. And laid a very great, great heap of stones upon him, Achan. Achan. And all Israel fled, everyone to his tent. Absalom is put down. Now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and reared up himself a pillar. Like Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel. When the musicians play, all the sheriffs, all the public officials are going to make sure you fall down and worship that image. Type of Antichrist, which is in the King's Dale. <coughs> For he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. Now let's go to 2 Samuel 14 27. Because some people say this is a contradiction. I have no son. 14 27. Now, kind of simplest way to answer it. In Absalom, there were born three sons and one daughter. Over here he says, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. Contradiction, throw the Bible out. Or could it possibly his son and his daughter died? Is that really too hard? His children died. Or maybe his children forsook him. Death or forsaken. And he called the pillar after his own name. Jesus said in, in the Gospel of John, uh, and again, I'm not quoting this verse for vain, but you know, my name, you don't believe. But when he cometh in his own name, him shall thou receive. And it's remarkable that here is this pillar, here is this image, this idol, and here is the name, which means peace, Absalom. And that first horse that shows up in the book of Revelation, he has a bow, but he has no arrows. He comes in with peace. And one of the things the Antichrist will come in, he'll come with a peace treaty that will not last long. And it is called unto this day, Absalom's place. Let's go to Acts one twenty five. Let's say the Gospel of Acts. Acts one twenty five. Now let's get the word place. And it's interesting. And this is for a reference at what we just read about Absalom's plays. Chapter 18, verse 18. 666, 666. Chapter 1, verse 25. That he may take part of this ministry and apostleship, whoever God's going to choose, justice or just us or Matthias. That he may take part in this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas, by transgression, fell. Is that the same story of Absalom? Is that not the same story of Achan? Is not that the same story, the man of sin? That he might go to his own place. That's interesting. Absalom had his own place. It says here that 
Judas died. And we know he went to hell. He would not go to heaven. He would not go to Abraham's bosom. And in, play, in place of hell where he is, he had his own place in hell. And many believe that the Antichrist or the false prophet, either or, they both match, is going to be Judas himself. And when Jesus speaks about that name, when he comes in his own name, him shall he receive. There are many that believe Judas is going to show up and take it as it is. Hey, I was with the guy for three and a half years. Anybody know Jesus better than I do? You talk to me. Did not Judas have the signs of the healings and cast out devils? Did, he, did not Jesus lay his hands on? Judas had full ministry of the disciples as the disciples had. And you're going to have the Pentecostal movement in Daniel's week of the Antichrist, Jacob's trouble, when it says he's going to call fire down, he's going to do this, he's going to do all these wonders before the people, a magic, ooh, ah, fireworks show. And that's the danger with, with Christian magic because Satan's coming up with his magic. But Absalom and Judas in the Bible have their own place. Absalom rears up a pillar. The Antichrist is going to rear up an image. And you're going to fall down and worship that image or you're going to lose your neck. Interesting when you study the script. Now we're going to stop.